today we are going to start chapter 4 of your accounting book 1 which is accountancy for not for profit organizations and partnership accounts chapter 4 is retirement or death of a partner as you can see this chapter is also a part of the same concept that you've learned in the previous chapter which is reconstitution of a partnership firm so before you proceed to this chapter it is important that you revisit what do we mean by reconstitution reconstitution of a partnership is a situation when there is a change in the existing relationship among the partners this can happen either when there is a change in the profit sharing ratio or in case of admission of a new partner as you have already learned in the previous chapter and it can also happen in situations that we are going to learn in this chapter which is retirement or death it means that whenever an existing partner retires from the firm it leads to reconstitution or whenever there is a death of a partner that too leads to reconstitution of the partnership firm so one by one we are going to look at the accounting treatment of these two situations we'll start with retirement first whenever a partner retires he or she gets entitled to a few things that he or she can take along with him or her at the same time the retiring partner might be asked to give a few things back let us take a look at those things what are the things that a partner is entitled to when he retires from a firm the first thing that the partner is entitled to is the balance in his capital or current account if the balance is a credit balance it will be given to the partner the next thing is his share in the goodwill as we saw in the previous chapter in case of reconstitution we find out the value of the goodwill of the firm and in this chapter the retiring partner will be given his share in that newly valued goodwill apart from that the partner is also entitled to his share in the accumulated profits of the firm then if the firm revalues its assets and liabilities the partner will be entitled to the gain on revaluation apart from that if the retirement takes place during the year then the partner will also be entitled to his share in the profit of that particular time period for which he was there in the partnership the similar things will also be applicable in death we'll discuss about them later here we are talking about retirement so a retiring partner is entitled to his share of profits up to the date of his retirement apart from that if there is a provision then the retiring partner will also be given interest on his capital and finally if there is a provision then the retiring partner will also be given a salary or commission for the respective period apart from these things the retiring partner's account is debited or deducted by certain amounts which are number one if there is a debit balance in his current account or capital account for that matter if there is an existing goodwill then as we have learned in the previous chapters that existing goodwill has to be written off when it is written off the partner's accounts are debited then if there are accumulated losses he or she will be debited with the amount of the losses with his or her share apart from that if there is a loss on revaluation of assets and liabilities that will be debited to the partner's account if there are drawings by that partner that will be debited to his capital account and if there is a provision then interest on drawing will also be debited so we have to make calculations we have to make adjustments and show them as treatments and accounting books uh, in terms of what the partner is getting and in terms of what the firm is taking back from the partner to do these adjustments in the accounting books we categorize the situations we categorize the treatments into certain accounting procedures as we did in the previous chapter so here in this chapter also we will categorize the things that we are supposed to do in the accounting books of the firm on the case of retirement of a partner these things will be calculation of the new profit sharing ratio and gaining ratio the first thing that we are going to do in our classes also is to learn how to calculate the gaining ratio and also to find out the new ratio of the remaining partners then we'll treat goodwill whether it is the existing goodwill which we have already learned or it is the new goodwill that we're going to learn in this chapter we will revalue the assets and liabilities 
we will make adjustments for unrecorded assets and liabilities. Apart from that, if there are accumulated profits or losses, if there are reserves, all these things will be adjusted for because at the time of retirement, the entire partnership is getting reconstituted. So we have to do it for all the partners. We have to make adjustments for the existing goodwill, for the accumulated profit and losses, for anything which was earned or which was saved by all these partners till date. Apart from that, if there is retirement during the year, then for that particular period, we'll find out the profits or losses. We will make adjustments in the capitals of the remaining partners if it is required. And finally, we will settle the accounts of the retiring or going further, the deceased partner will settle the accounts. That means we'll either pay the amount due to the partner or we'll either transfer it to the loan account of the partner or in case of death, we will transfer it to the executor's account. So let us go and learn about these things one by one. As we saw, the first thing that we're going to learn is calculation of new profit sharing ratio and the gaining ratio. In the absence of any information, if in the question you're not given any information about the new ratio of the partners, then we have to assume that the remaining partners are going to share their profits in the future in the same ratio as was between them. This is the first scenario of the profit sharing ratio. In this scenario, as we have talked about, there is no information available. It's just that there were some partners, one of them retires and there is no information about how the remaining partners are going to share their profits. So what do we do? We use their old ratios. The ratio of the remaining partners which was there among them even before the retirement, the same ratio will be assumed to be the new ratio. Let us understand this with the help of a question or an example. Asha, Deepti and Nisha are partners. Their profit sharing ratio is 3, 2 and 1. Deepti retires and there is no information. Then what are we going to do about the new ratio? Remember, Deepti has retired. Deepti's share was this, 2 by 6. Since there is no information about the share of the remaining partners, we'll assume that Asha and Nisha are going to keep sharing the profit among them as was there before the retirement, which is 3 is to 1. In case of absence of any information, Asha and Nisha will share their future profits into 3 is to 1, which becomes their new ratio. Now let us look at another scenario. In the next scenario, the continuing or the remaining partners might decide to acquire the share of the retiring partner in a particular ratio. So imagine what is happening. One of the partners is retiring. He or she was having a particular share, a particular percentage in the profits of the firm. Now when the partner retires, what happens to that share? The remaining partners might decide to, to acquire or to get that share in a particular proportion among them, right? So that particular ratio or proportion in which the remaining partners are acquiring the share of the retiring partner will either be given in the question as a particular ratio or they'll acquire that in their old ratio itself. Right? So understand what is happening. The remaining partners are acquiring the share of the retiring partner. You have to pay attention to the question on how they are acquiring it. They can acquire it in a particular ratio or they can acquire it in their old ratio, their own ratio among them, right? So let us take a look at an example. In our example, Naveen, Suresh and Tarun are partners sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 532. Suresh retires from the firm. Suresh was getting a share of 3 by 10. His share was acquired by Naveen and Tarun in the ratio of 2 is to 1. So we are given a particular ratio in which the two remaining partners are acquiring the share of Suresh, which was 3 by 10. So this 3 by 10 will go to Naveen and Tarun in this ratio, 2 is to 1. So let us see how do we calculate the new ratio of the remaining partners in this situation. First of all, there is a formula that you can follow. The new share of the continuing partners will obviously be obtained by adding what they are getting from the retiring partner into their old ratio. So it's a very simple formula. You add the acquired share to the old share of the continuing partners and you get the new share. 
right? Now let us understand the calculation. So the gaining ratio is 2 is to 1 here because Navin and Tarun are getting the share of Suresh in this particular ratio. What was Suresh's share? His share was 3 by 10. How much is Naveen getting from that? Naveen is getting two-third. Where did two-third come from? From here. They had decided to acquire his share in 2 is to 1. That means Naveen is getting two-third of Suresh's share. That comes out to be 2 by 10. And similarly, Tarun is getting one-third. That comes out to be 1 by 10. So this is what Naveen and Tarun are getting out of the share of Suresh. Now it's very simple. You add these acquired shares to the old shares of the remaining partners. Naveen had a share of 5 by 10. You add 2 by 10 that he is getting after retirement of Suresh. You get 7 by 10. Similarly, you get 3 by 10 for Tarun. So their new ratio becomes 7 is to 3. In that particular question, we were given the gaining share of the remaining partner and we found out the new share. A reverse situation can also be there in front of you. You might be given a new share and you might have to find out the gaining share of the remaining partners. So how do you find the gaining share? You find the gaining share by subtracting the old share from the new share. New share minus old share is the gaining share or gaining ratio of the continuing partners. Let us look at another example. Amit, Dinesh and Gagan are partners. Their ratio is 5, 3, 2. Dinesh retires. Amit and Gagan decide to share the future profits in the new firm in 3 is to 2. So what is this? This is the new share. They have decided that in the new firm, they are going to share profits in this ratio. So now we know the old ratio of the partners. We know the new ratio of the partners. What do we have to find out? We have to find out the gaining ratio. It's very simple. Amit's gain will be New ratio 3 by 5 minus old ratio 5 by 10 that comes out to be 1 by 10. Similarly, Gagan's gaining share comes out to be 2 by 10. So since it is 1 by 10 and 2 by 10, the denominators are same. You can write them as a ratio as 1 is to 2. So Amit and Gagan are gaining due to the retirement of Dinesh in 1 is to 2. It means whatever Dinesh was having. One third of that will be taken by Amit and two third will be taken by Gagan. So that's how you calculate gaining ratio. Now let us take a look at a couple of more examples to build up on this understanding that we've already made and strengthen our knowledge of the new ratio and the gaining ratio. In the next example, Murli, Naveen and Om Prakash are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 3 by 8, 1 by 2, 1 by 8. Whenever there is a situation like this, pay attention to the ratio. This is not exactly a ratio. You might have to convert them into a ratio. You might just do with this also. Just remember, Murli is getting 3 8th, Naveen is getting 1 by 2 and Om Prakash is getting 1 by 8. Murli retires. He surrenders two-third of his share. Always pay attention to the language of the question. Look at this. This says he surrenders two-third of his share. Whatever share Murli was having, which we already know is 3 by 8. He is surrendering this two-third of that share in favor of Naveen and the remaining in favor of Om Prakash. If he is surrendering two-third of something to someone, then what is remaining? Remaining is one-third. He is surrendering one-third to Om Prakash. So what do you do in this case? We have to find out the gaining ratio and also the new ratio of the partners. First of all, write down the old ratio of the remaining partners. Naveen was having 1 by 2 and Om Prakash was having 1 by 8. Share acquired by Naveen and Om Prakash. Naveen is getting two-third of Murli's share. So two-third of Murli's share is 2 by 8. Om Prakash is getting the remaining one-third of Murli's share which is 1 by 8. So, Naveen is getting 2 by 8. He already had 1 by 2. You add these two, you get the new share. You add 1 by 2 and 2 by 8, you get 6 by 8. Or if you reduce it, you get 3 by 4 as the new share of Naveen. Similarly, you add 1 by 8 to 1 by 8 and you get 2 by 8 which is 1 by 4. So, the new ratio between Naveen and Umprakas is 3 by 4 and 1 by 4 which is 3 is to 1. This is the new ratio. 
and the gaining ratio is actually 2 is to 1 because Naveen is getting 2 by 8 and Om Prakash is getting 1 by 8 from the share of Murli. So, their gaining ratio becomes 2 is to 1. In the next example, we have Kumar, Lakshmi, Manoj and Naresh. There are four partners now. Their ratio was 3, 2, 1, 4. Kumar retires and his share is acquired by Lakshmi and Manoj in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So, look at here. In this question, only Lakshmi and Manoj are gaining from the retirement of Kumar. Naresh is not getting anything out of Kumar's share. We have to calculate the new profit sharing ratio and the gaining ratio. So, in this situation again, we will write down the old share of remaining partners. Lakshmi had 2 by 10. Manoj had 1 by 10 and Naresh had 4 by 10. What are they getting from the retirement of Kumar? Kumar's share was 3 by 10. Lakshya and Manoj have acquired that share into 3 is to 2, which means 3 fifth of Kumar's share will go to Naveen. 3 fifth of Kumar's share goes to Naveen, which is 9 by 50. And the remaining 2 fifth of Kumar's share goes to Manoj. Now we have to find out what Lakshya and Manoj are getting from Kumar's retirement. They have decided to acquire the share of Kumar into 3 by 5 and 2 by 5. So, Lakshya gets 3 fifth of Kumar's share, which was 3 by 10, which means Lakshya gets 9 by 50. Similarly, Manoj gets 2 fifth of Kumar's share, which is 6 by 50. And since Naresh is not getting anything, we have written nil. Now, what do we have to do? We just have to add what they have acquired into their old shares. So, if you add these two, the old share and what is getting, you get Laksh's new share which is 19 by 50. You do the same and you get Manoj's new share which is 11 by 50. And since Naresh has not got anything, you just write 4 by 10, but to make it a ratio, you have to equalize the denominators. Since these two have 50 in the denominator, we multiply this fraction by 5 and 5, so that we get 20 is to 50. As a result, the new ratio comes out to be 19 is to 11 is to 20, right? So, now we have learnt that if we can find out what the remaining partners are getting or acquiring from the retiring partner, that becomes their gain. We can just add the gain into the old share and we get the new share. Or if we know the new share, we can just subtract the old share from the new share and we get the gaining share. Having learned the calculation of these two ratios, the new and the gaining ratio, let us move on to the next section. The next section is the treatment of goodwill. Here we are going to talk about the goodwill which is valued when the partnership is reconstituted. Now there can be two scenarios in respect of goodwill. Remember, the new goodwill has to be valued on reconstitution. The scenarios depend on whether there is an old goodwill or an existing goodwill or not. Right? So, there could be an existing goodwill or there may not be an existing goodwill. Depending upon that, we will decide whether we have to make entries for the existing goodwill or not. Having decided that, we will move on to the newly valued goodwill, which will be there because whenever there is reconstitution, the firm has to revalue the current value of the goodwill so that we can make adjustments for it with the retiring partner. So, let us take the first scenario where there is no existing goodwill. There is no goodwill appearing in the books already. In such a situation, we just need to find out the gaining ratio and have the newly valued goodwill. What do we do is that we give the share of the retiring partner in the new goodwill by crediting his account and we debit the account of the gaining partner. So, our entry becomes gaining partner's capital account debited to retiring partners capital account. Debiting the gaining partners reduces their capital in the firm by the amount that they have to pay to the retiring partner and crediting the retiring partner increases his capital which he can take with him after retirement. Let us look at this with the help of an example. Keshav, Nirmal and Pankaj are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 4, 3, 2. Nirmal retires and the goodwill is valued at 72,000. So, goodwill has been valued already. The remaining partners, Keshav and Pankaj, decide to share the future profits in the ratio of 5 is to 3. 
So we have the old ratio, we have the new ratio. We just need to find out the gaining ratio. This is how we find out the gaining ratio. First of all, we should know what is to be given to the retiring partner. The goodwill of the firm is 72,000 and his share is 3 by 9. So, the share in goodwill becomes 24,000. Now, to calculate gaining ratio, we have to simply subtract old share from new share, which we already know. So, you subtract Keshav's old share 4 by 9 from the new share, you get 13 by 72 and similarly you get Pankaj's gaining share which is 11 by 72. Since the denominators are same, you can just write the gaining ratio as 13 is to 11. This is their gaining ratio which means Keshav is gaining 13 by 24th and Pankaj is gaining 11 by 24th. They together have to give this 24,000 rupees to the retiring partner for his share in goodwill. So, what do we do? We credit Nirmal's capital account with 24,000 and we debit Keshav and Pankaj, both were gaining. So, we debit their accounts and we calculate the amounts by multiplying this amount in their gaining ratio. 13 by 24 into this comes out to be 13,000, similarly 11,000. So, Keshav has to give 13,000 to Nirmal and Pankaj has to give 11,000 to Nirmal. So, this is what we do with the newly valued goodwill. We debit the gaining partners and we credit the retiring partners. Students, sometimes it may happen that one of the remaining or continuing partners might also be sacrificing instead of gaining. If there is a situation like this, then the sacrificing partner will also be compensated by the gaining partners for his sacrifice due to reconstitution. And how do we compensate somebody in partnership? We credit their capital account, which means we give something to them. So, the sacrificing partner's account will also be credited along with the retiring partner's capital account and the gaining partners will be debited. Now, let us understand this with the help of another example. We have Deepa, Niru and Shilpa as partners sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 532. Niru retires and Deepa and Shilpa decide to share future profits into 2 is to 3. So, we have the old ratio, we have the new ratio. We also know that the goodwill of the firm is valued at 120,000. Now, we have to find out how much is Niru entitled out of this and what is the gaining ratio of the continuing partners and then pass the simple journal entry. Let us look at the calculations. So, first of all see what is Niru entitled to. Her share was 3 by 10, goodwill is 1,20,000, she is entitled to 36,000. Now, let us find out the gaining ratio. How do you find the gaining ratio? You find it by subtracting the old ratio from the new ratio. So, you do it for Deepa, old ratio is 5 by 10, new is 2 by 5, you subtract, you get minus 1 by 10. What does this mean? When you tried to calculate gaining ratio and it came out to be minus, that shows that it is a sacrifice instead of a gain. Remember this. If you subtract the old ratio from the new ratio, you get a minus sign, that means it is a sacrifice which means that Deepa is sacrificing, she is not gaining anything. While Shilpa, you subtract 3 by 5 minus 2 by 10 and you get 4 by 10. So, Shilpa is gaining 4 by 10. So, now the situation is that it is Shilpa only who is gaining. Niru is retiring, she will definitely get 36,000 but along with her, it is Deepa also who will get a share equivalent to her sacrifice. So, 1 by 10 was a sacrifice, 1 lakh 20,000 was the goodwill, she will get 12,000. Who will give these amounts to both of them? It is Shilpa, who is the sole gaining partner. So, what do you do? You debit Shilpa's account, you credit Niru and Deepa both. Niru is the retiring partner, you credit her, this will come here. You credit her with 36,000, you credit Deepa's account also with 12,000 and you debit Shilpa's account with 48,000. So, you debit the gaining partner, you credit the retiring partner and you also credit the sacrificing partner who is making a sacrifice on retirement of another partner. So, that is how you treat the newly valued goodwill of the firm. In today's lecture, we did two very important things. We learned how to calculate the gaining ratio which is fairly simple. We also learned how to calculate the new ratio with the help of it and then we learned 
the treatment of goodwill on retirement, especially when there is no existing goodwill. In the next class, we will touch upon a few more related concepts with goodwill and then we will move on to the next concepts. I hope you were able to understand and enjoy today's lecture. That is it for today. Thank you.